Hi, this is Dr. Go, and today I'd like to discuss variations D and E from Twinkle Twinkle Little Star Variations in Suzuki Book 1 and the way we teach it. We teach it with three different bow strokes. Well, we teach these two with three different bow strokes. I'm only going to demonstrate variation D today and future applications, ramifications of them. Okay, um, so without further ado, let's get started. So the first one that we show is what we call velvet fingers. For those of us who are more well versed in violin playing, it would be like martelet or marcato or something. Something we would see in later Chrysler studies and such. But this is what it looks like. So it's if you reference my tutorial on Chrysler number four, six, and seven, you'll see it's the collapsed supinated grip, pronated. So we teach it that it's a low elbow, high wrist, and that the fingers are strips of velvet coming from the wrist. The wrist itself is not floppy. The wrist is always in a supported position, a quiet and relaxed supported position, never tight. It's relaxed, but the fingers should feel like strips of velvet all the way to the wrist. Okay, so. You see, down bow, the elbow comes down. Up bow, the elbow comes up. Down bow, this pinky knuckle disappears. Up bow, index knuckle disappears. Something that helps some students, okay, is if you reference the variation D tutorial. On the up bow, I try to make the plane of these three fingers, the middle, ring, and pinky finger knuckles, uh, that plane even with the horizon or parallel to the floor. And that helps get the right position so the bones line up for good weight into the stick. Yeah, you never want to push into the stick. It's just weight into the stick, okay? So that's this. And important is also when we go to E string. This is very important. A lot of young players like to collapse their wrist. And when they go to E string and do that, they slam into the side of the violin right here. Okay, and on the way down, it's just annoying. On the way up, it actually hurts because of this. And that's a quick lesson to them to pop the wrist up so they miss that. If they do it properly, they don't come anywhere near this. Okay, so that's a great teaching tool right there. Uh, try to keep the bow slow so it doesn't actually hurt them if they mess up their wrist. Okay, there should be no pain or any such type of drama or trauma and violin teaching. Yeah, so that is the velvet fingers, uh, bow stroke. And then the next one is the one I call smiley face. It's actually saltando, okay? So again, low elbow, high wrist, very relaxed grip. And all of this is, the bow hold is from variation A. That's supinated the hold. Okay, except for, you know, this up bow stroke in, in the velvet fingers. But for saltando, it's the supinated grip, okay? And all I do is I tell them from the tip of the elbow, imagine there's a chalkboard in front of them. There's a piece of chalk right here and they're gonna draw a smiley face, okay? And that smiley face should go through the string. So they have to feel their elbow from their shoulder and shoulder blade. The elbow should go through the string. You imagine the string is here. You're gonna drop through with your elbow. So, and you start about two centimeters or one inch above. Now, if they're very tense, you're gonna hear, you're gonna hear all this, you know, unnecessary noise. Once they learn to relax, because they've done variations A, B, and C correctly. Okay, and same. Yeah, should be no cracking though. None of that, okay? Uh, it, it's important to also have them try to keep the bull hair facing them. That helps a lot to, to help relax everything in, okay? And the third stroke uh, that we teach is ricochet. And at first, I just have them try to make the bull bounce. You know? And get... Try to use all parts of the bull. Let them really learn which parts of the bull bounce better and such because everybody's hand and arm and bow even are different. So they have to learn how they work together with their, you know, bow choice, okay? 
Then once they can get that, we try to get them to do just three notes and lift. And not control like D, 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 like this, but just letting the bow do the work, okay? And after that, you reduce the lift until, okay, until that's there. Now, what are the applications of it? Okay, for the velvet fingers, immediate application is number three in book one, the Okay, um, so that's immediate uh, application. At the end of book one, the soltando is so immediately in book one, they're applying this already. Okay, ricochet is more so to teach them how to release, but in future advanced pieces, for example, Mozart concerto number three, or if you go further on, you see uh, some pieces with the yeah, ricochet. Um, I like to put uh, ricochet and saltando together for things like, say, the last rose of summer. This uh, this uh, variation. So you can practice slowly and work on your musical idea of where you want to take time for chord changes. Yeah. So by having a good basic and understanding feeling of all this, you can start to really take time for the slow practice. Obviously, we don't perform this version. So slow, okay, <laughs> obviously, but it's good for practice, yeah? Uh, after you do your, your you, know, you know, your intonation practice and all that and coordination, then it's good to start have the saltando, you know, control, yeah? Now, what about mixing them? Well, easy. Martelet, the, the, the velvet fingers, and the saltando put together, you get, for example, air kernig. So it's a shorter saltando, but it's still saltando. I'm not using a real spiccato yet. It's not fast enough. Okay. If I want to go faster, yes, I will go to a true spiccato. Um, but that's an artistic choice. So these are some ideas, future applications, um, and ramifications of these things. Now, one thing I, I want to bring back again uh, and make the case, the ricochet, the reason we teach it so early is to teach them to start to release the bow, the fingers. A lot of students like to grip really hard. If you grip hard, ricochet doesn't happen. Okay, you end up... You need it to bounce, okay? And the reason why is if you put variations A, B, C, D, E together, you get the smooth bow changes of the theme. That's what we're after, for everything to come together into the theme, okay? Uh, the next video, I'll try to talk about the theme itself and the importance of that. But for now, um, if anything I said is contrary to what your teacher tells you, please ignore me and listen to your teacher, okay? But if this lines up with what your teacher is telling you, please, uh, I hope you get something of some value out of this, and I wish you all the best. Cheers.